A number of years ago, I read a story about an area of behavioral economics known as game theory. I know that sounds a little bit scary to family law attorneys, but let me just explain for a bit, and then I have a terrific new resource that just got published for anyone who might be interested in going into some of the details and some of the intricacies, that's a hard word to say, of settlement negotiations. Game theory is an area of behavioral economics that takes game scenarios and applies it to various economic situations. It can range from very simple games to very complex ones, and its very complex form has resulted in at least four or five economists winning Nobel Prizes, including John Forbes Nash, who was the subject of the movie uh, and book A Beautiful Mind. In fact, the book A Beautiful Mind is, well, it's not the book I'm recommending today, really is an excellent book in explaining Nash's theory. But um, the game that interested me, and you're going to see very quickly its relationship to family law, is a game that's called The Prisoner's Dilemma. The Prisoner's Dilemma consists of a fact situation in which two people are arrested for committing a crime, but the police can't prove that either one was involved to the requisite degree of legal certainty beyond a reasonable doubt necessary to get a conviction. So the police do what police do, which is they separate the two defendants into separate rooms and interrogate each of them. Under the law, police are allowed to lie to a defendant in interrogation, and they do. They tell each defendant that his buddy in the other room is spilling the beans and blaming it all on him. And if they want a better deal, they better cooperate with the police and spill the beans on the other party. And incidentally, having been a prosecutor for seven years, um, I can tell you that this is very much the way real life works in the criminal world in that the police do this. They will separate co-defendants into individual rooms and try to get each of them to confess by blaming the other defendant, and it works a lot of times, and some defendant will do that. What the game does, though, is to measure the benefit to a defendant of cooperating with the police as opposed to not cooperating. The best scenario for both defendants is if they cooperate with each other and not with the police. Neither one confesses, and therefore, the police don't have a case on either one of them, and they both walk free. For prisoner A, the worst scenario would be if he cooperates with his friend, prisoner B, and does not give a statement to the police, while prisoner B, his, in quotes, friend, is still in the beans blaming everything on prisoner A. Prisoner B then will get an advantageous deal. Prisoner A gets the maximum sentence. The second most advantageous is if prisoner A says, you know what, I don't trust my guy in the other room, so I'm going to uh, tell the cops that we were involved while I'm blaming most of it on prisoner B and get the advantage of some form of a plea bargain while prisoner B is doing the same thing and therefore they both get a deal but not as good as they would get if one of them cooperated with the police but the other one doesn't. That is a cooperative game theory model and there's all sorts of mathematic equations involved as to what sort of a deal one would have to get to make cooperation with the police as opposed to cooperation with this co-defendant advantageous or not. Let's stay away from the math for a moment and deal with the theory of it as it applies to family law. Divorce lawyers will be meeting with their client, discussing certain scenarios, while the spouse is meeting with a different lawyer and explaining certain scenarios. In a certain number of cases, it would be advantageous to both if they knew what the other party was saying to his or her attorney. And let me just give you an example. Um, I had a client once a number of years ago with the opportunity to take a job overseas that would have resulted in significantly more income. He didn't have to take the job. He was making good income here. 
And he said, well, I don't really want to live overseas. My kids are here and my family's here. But I would do it if I don't have to share a substantial amount of that additional income with my former spouse. And of course, as divorce lawyers, we can't guarantee that. You have to report changes of income and every year the tax returns. And there's a very good opportunity uh, for the other side to bring a motion for an increase in support. In a cooperative means of dealing with this sort of issue, the four sides would get together, have a confidential settlement negotiations meeting, and the husband, if he's the bread earner in that case, would say, hey, I'm willing to take the job, but normally I may have to pay you, say, 40% of my income. What if I paid you 20%? That would give me enough of an incentive to take the job, even though I'm not real thrilled about being overseas, and you would get 20% extra that you otherwise would not get. That sort of negotiation happens sometimes in collaborative cases where the four people sit around the table and openly discuss these issues. But in your normal divorce negotiations, instead the husband's trying to read what the wife will do and saying to himself, you know, if I take that job and I can't just quit it later and I have to share 40% of my income with her, it just isn't worth it to me, so I'll turn it down. And the wife may not even know what the husband is discussing with his attorney or that he even has the offer. The concept in game theory is where is the extent to which it would be worth the husband's while in accepting the job with the higher compensation and where would it be in the wife's best interest to allow him to accept the job by accepting a certain negotiations. And the mathematical models that go into this in terms of the prisoner's dilemma truly are fascinating. There are a number of different games that go into this field of behavioral economics. And I've written in several articles discussing them. I have an article, if you want to go to my website at uh, loebherman.com, click on articles. And I have an article, for example, on the ultimatum game that is uh, a game that's used in game theory, which I think has a lot of application to this area of law. And there are a bunch of other ones as well. But the articles that I've written and the, uh, uh, some of the talks that I've given on this subject are essentially more, I'd say, kindergarten, if I'm to flatter myself, first or second grade, compared to a new book that just got published by two lawyers, uh, Madison lawyer Alan Korzynski and Madison psychologist Kenneth Waldron called Game Theory um, and the Transformation of Family Law. This is an outstanding book. It's available on Amazon and it is essentially graduate level compared to my you know, kindergarten to grade school level in terms of uh, what it discusses. And what the book does is it goes into other areas of game theory and into other, and the type of economic analysis that goes into game theory to explain how negotiations in all sorts of areas, not just the area of support like I mentioned, but areas in terms of placement of children and other areas where people negotiate in this field could benefit by understanding the psychology involved. In a lot of cases, what we do as attorneys has less to do with law than it does with psychology. And there are a lot of resources out there that discuss what the psychological aspects are of people who engage in different types of negotiations. Of course, in family law, we need to add into that the high degree of emotion that goes into this area, perhaps larger than any other area of law involved. But there is this research out there which, if combined with our knowledge of what the emotional factors are, can help us not only understand the negotiating process, but to be able to negotiate a lot better on behalf of our clients. So read the couple articles, I have two or three of them on my website in terms of settlement negotiations and its applicability to family law. Those hopefully will whet your appetite for more. And I highly recommend this book by Attorney Korzynski and Dr. Waldron. Uh, it's an outstanding book. Some of it's a little heavy reading and difficult, but there's enough in there that even somebody like me can understand and that will really help transform your practice.
Oh, 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 oh,